Indo-US relations in space are on a roll. There is every possibility that an Indian astronaut would go on an American mission in the next few decades. I have with me Captain Sunita Williams, possibly the only samosa-eating astronaut <laughs> and a person who has several records to her credit. Captain, why do you eat samosas on the International <laughs> Space Station? I think my answer to a lot of things is why not? If you have the opportunity, take it. And uh, I, um, I love samosas, and so I had asked for some special things that reminded me of home, and so one of those things were, was samosas. And so my family somehow was able to work with NASA. We get some care packages when we're up in space for a long time, and so they put the samosas in there, and it was a nice surprise. Um, on Indo-US relations, there's every possibility like Chandrayaan 1 where there was partnership between the two. There could be equal partnership as India and America and the world goes towards Mars. Mm -hmm. What's, is there any kind of message you have on that? I think the the possibility is more than ju it's more than just a possibility. It's a prob more than likely a reality. Um, we have a pretty extensive plan about how we're going to get to Mars. We're not right there, right today, uh, but we have a plan with a number of spacecraft that we're going to be putting humans on first, using the commercial sector um, to take advantage of technology demonstrations, and then move on to an exploration vehicle, namely Orion, to uh, start exploring close to Earth, maybe out to a moon, maybe out to an asteroid. And we're, we're, when we're doing that, we're leaving low Earth orbit and going beyond Earth orbit. Um, we, we're going to need all the uh, partnerships that we can around the world, and I think that's what will represent humanity. And India is, is definitely part of that as an up-and-coming spacefaring nation. Up-and-coming? I thought you felt the heat when India did a low-cost mission to Mars, a oh, sub-$100 million dollar e mission. Exactly. And, and up and coming meaning up and coming human space flight. Uh, oh, yes. Now, on, on human space flight, mm -hmm. see, India is just taking the first steps. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there any advice you have for the Indian Space Research Organization on, on, on human space flights? Um, I th well, my impression, I'll, I'll say that much, uh, from my time visiting uh, India after each of my space missions is there's so much enthusiasm in the, in the youngsters in this country. Everybody wants to be part of the space mission. Everybody wants to put their, their mark on uh, human space flight and be part of that. And I think um, uh, the Indian Space Organization should really seriously take a look at that and look at how, how that desire is, is just um, culminating here in the young population and, and use that, that resource to really advance the space program here. You're a role model for India and America. If, is, is there a possibility that you can advise the Indian Space Research Organization in the way forward on human space flights and astronauts? Uh, well, thank you. That's a very humbling compliment. Um, I hopefully I'm a positive influence. My, I think my parents would be happy if I was a positive influence, not a bad influence. So I'm hoping I'm a positive role model, uh, just to show kids out there, um, as well as you know my predecessor Kalpana Chavla from India, that you know if you want to do something, go for it. And uh, you know the Indian Space Organization, like I mentioned, should should recognize that there is a burning desire in the youngsters in this country to get involved and to want to launch another astronaut into space and uh, they they need to understand that and uh, find uh, opportunities for them um, not only as uh, engineers but also the, you know the people who are putting the spacecraft together you know there's a lot that goes on in a space program it's not just the scientists it's and the engineers it's also the fabricators uh, and, and the people who do the training, the people who understand how, what type of food you're going to eat, all the logistics, all the business associated with it. So there's a myriad of capabilities that are there and opportunities for these kids who are interested in getting involved. You've flown on the space shuttle. America retired the space shuttle. Mm -hmm. In the next few weeks, India is flying what is a technology demonstrator for us, Indian space shuttle. 
Have you had a chance to look at that program? I haven't, unfortunately. So my time here in India has been very short, and uh, I will definitely uh, be looking in the, into that in the future. But this this trip and more recently, they call it the reusable launch vehicle. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome! That's what that's the shape of things to come. Um, you know, my I've been a little bit heads down in the commercial crew program that we're uh, running with our partners, our commercial partners in the United States. So I haven't had that opportunity, but I, I definitely need to look into it because that's the shape of things to come. You've been on what are essentially government flights, which was the space shuttles. Now you're venturing into an area where you're going to get into commercial flights. I remember astronauts having said that when you're flying on the space shuttle, you're flying on what are called L1 contracts, meaning the least expensive contracts. <laughs> now, now, when you're going to private sector, private sector is known to cut corners. Are you taking huge risk by being one of the first astronauts on the private sector play? Uh, well, we're working, we're working hand in hand with our commercial partners, and I think it's a really good collaboration, a really good partnership. Where, uh, you know, the the particularly the first four of us who are going to more than likely fly on their spacecraft, they've allowed us into their companies, and in to take a look at what the engineers are doing, and and understand from the grassroots part of development of the spacecraft how it's being made. And what's interesting and nice about that, I think they're uh, open to that because um, both of these companies only have limited a number of people who have flown in space and so uh, our expertise there will just help them and we're just trying to make sure that they're successful and I think they understand that and but at the same time we're not doing things we've the way we've always done them. We're letting the companies come up with new ideas. And so we're having this dialogue back and forth, a, a little bit of a debate, like how come you think this process is correct? And then they have to defend it a little bit. We have to defend our ideas of why we think things are a, should go a way. And then we could come up to the best solution. So of course we're going to run into bumps and have a little uh, heated discussions on some of these things. But I think we'll, we'll, we'll iron it all out and we'll, we'll figure it all out. And I think by the time we Put the people on the spacecraft, we'll have a very safe do spacecraft. You, do, do you have any ideas? You carried the Gita and the samosas in space. Now you're getting ready for the next flights. Is there any, any artifacts from India you are likely to carry up? Have you thought of something? Um, uh, something for uh, my niece and nephew, who are both Indian. Um, I'll probably bring something for them, some Indian toys as well as probably another Ganesh, because Ganesh is my good luck charm. And, and when you carry Ganesh, do, do you pray to him when you're in space? Are you religious about Ganesh? Um, I'm, I'm more of a, just a spiritual person. I just know he's, he's there with me, <laughs> guiding. <laughs> and, and do you have any special message for youngsters in India who may want to asp who aspire to become astronauts? Because as they say, the first astronaut who will go to Mars is already walking on Earth. Absolutely. And um, I think one of the biggest things that I would say, and a, a good friend of mine, uh, you know I'm a, I'm a runner, I'm an athlete, and so everything sort of has a sporting uh, connotation here, but my good friend has, has mentioned this before, and I, so I'm using it as uh, just get to the starting line. If you really want to participate in space exploration, um, ast being an astronaut is just one part of it. It's, there's, a, like I mentioned, a myriad of things that you can do to be part of the whole organization, part of the whole plan to advance human, humans in space and human exploration. So if you want to do that, figure out how to, how to get there, get to the starting line and get involved. And I think part of that also is, you know, understanding that you're bigger, that you're doing something, you're participating in something that's bigger than just something about yourself. It's about uh, humankind and helping uh, this world uh, work together. You've set se several records on your space flights. Tell us a little bit more about your records. <laughs> Um, I think records are made, made for somebody else to break, right? So everybody, every time there's a record made, it, it provides a goal for the next group, the next generation to have a goal to aspire to. So I think that's the, the main, uh, main idea of records. Um, I, I was in the right place at the right time to establish some of these records, and I think the, you know, the, the personal part of it is you just need to be ready to do that. When you, fi when you have that opportunity, hey, you're going to do another spacewalk. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I got myself to this point. I'm physically ready. I'm mentally ready. And, you know, I'm ready to do whatever I can to help the team. And that's how records seem to come, come about. So I'm hoping the next group of explorers will, will crush my records. 
I am too heavy to be an astronaut. <laughs> but but if if there were a choice and you were to lead a, be the first astronaut to go to Mars, and as they say, at least the NASA effort would be a two-way mission. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you had a choice, <laughs> who who would you take along on that mission? Ooh. Your dog or your husband? Oh wow, that's an interesting. Um, uh, interesting choice. <laughs> My dog would age quicker, so I, uh, I'm not sure that would be a good idea, but I might get into an argument with my husband, so um, I'm not sure. I, I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> but you miss your dog more on your space flights than your husband, is that right? Uh, well, yes and no. And uh, I, I guess I, I like to argue, so I, I suppose I enjoy making that phone call to my husband, and so I can talk to him from space, from the International Space Station, um, and the dog you just can't actually talk to, so that's sort of... You haven't dialed wrong numbers from space? Oh yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. And, and, and going forward, what kind, of, what kind of partnership do you expect from India in space, both for NASA and the world? Oh, I, like I mentioned, I think uh, it's obvious that NASA's space program is, um, you know, flourishing uh, on, the, on, the, on the satellite type of vehicles and up and coming on the human space flight side. So I expect India to be a, a very active partner. Um, and also just uh, the, the kind nature of the people here in the country seems to fit right along in the along the lines that I mentioned of, of just human exploration and I think that's uh, that's what us at NASA are interested in exploring and that's what that's what uh, ex ex that's what going into space is all about so um, and I know uh, Kalpna Chavla when she was talking about uh, space travel, she talked about processes. And how I see that or understand that I relate that is like when you're trying to do something that's not obvious right here on Earth, you have to look at things uh, differently. So when you're creating these processes which will work in space, um, you're thinking a little outside the box, which makes you understand things even more thoroughly. So I think that's uh, where the United States and India will be going, as well as other countries who are going to be uh, exploring further in the universe. India, India looks at both Kalpana and Sunita as India's daughters and you followed Kalpana in, in, in space. Mm -hmm. uh, did she leave a mark on you? Absolutely. We were good friends right from the beginning. Uh, first time I met her when I joined NASA, she had been there already for a couple of years. And it's interesting how we found each other just immediately. And uh, we did a lot of things together. Uh, you know, of course, did a lot of uh, nature walks, went bike riding quite a bit, just talked a lot. Uh, she's just a, you know, the type of person that you would automatically connect with. And I probably our, our similar backgrounds, uh, just having Indian parents, um, you know, lend itself to that. But her death, does it worry you? I'm sorry? Her, her death in the accident on the shuttle exposes the risks you take when you go up there. Mm -hmm. Does it worry you sometimes? Um, yes and no. I mean, we understood, I knew we would come to the uh, conclusion and understand exactly what happened to Sh Space Shuttle Columbia. Um, and we would fix that problem. And, and moving on from there, I think uh, all of the Columbia crew, all the members there were all good friends of ours in the astronaut office. And I think all, what their dream, their vision was just to continue and to explore. And so I, uh, I, it worries us all. I think every time we, uh, any of our friends from the office get on a, a rocket, it's a, it's a, it's a big ex explosion essentially that you're sitting on. But those are calculated risks, and I think we all believe that we all believe in it, and we all believe that the purpose is uh, is is there. And India and America can go together. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so that was Captain Sunita Williams, who holds several records in space and is considered India's daughter, saying India and America can explore space together and human space flight from India. If it happens, she is willing to lend a hand on that. With camera person Narendra Godavali in New Delhi, Pallav Bagla for NDTV.